wanted to, uh, uh, I mean, introduce our, our, main, our guest speaker today, uh, Evangelist Sandosh uh, Matthews from uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. So uh, he is the president and CEO of uh, uh, Love Without Reason uh, Ministries, and he and his wife Susan are very much involved in ministry in different uh, capacities, and uh, uh, he is a full-time uh, dedicated missionary family uh, uh, in uh, to, to many countries. Hallelujah! So we are so glad that you are with us this morning to to I mean uh, share the word of God, and uh, moreover, he and his uh, uh, his uh, many of his uh, family members are the uh, members of uh, Chattanooga Christian Assembly uh, Church, to which uh, uh, my sister and family also is belongs to. And uh, I don't know how many of you remember uh, that our church have prayed uh, uh, many times for uh, Brother Sandosh and family uh, uh, when they were uh, going through the tough situation in their life uh, related to their uh, disabled son, uh, Philip. So we all prayed for that family and especially we pray, prayed for Philip and also uh, uh, God enabled us to pray for the family and their ministry also. So it's, it's a great privilege that to uh, have that family with us this morning uh, to, to share the word of God. And uh, anyway, let us, uh, let us uh, uh, hear from him and uh, sit in the presence of God uh, with a prayerful attitude so that uh, God may speak to us through uh, his servant. And let's all I mean, put our hands together and welcome uh, Brother Santosh uh, Matthews, I mean, uh, in August. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Thank you very much, Pastor. Praise God. Praise Thank God. you. Thank you for allowing us to come, me to be a part of this service. It's beautiful. Um, and I appreciate it very much. Um, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and um, just thank God. You know, it's... Uh, I couldn't hear you clapping, but I'm sure you're all there. So <laughs> that's a good thing. Um, as Pastor said, uh, my name is Santosh Matthew, and uh, I'm just very grateful and uh, so happy to be here in the presence of the Lord. Uh, as we were worshiping, I was thinking, you know, uh, the Bible says that all the ends of the earth will hear the praises of God, and we will be able to rejoice. You know, imagine how it would be when we are all in heaven. And we rejoice together with the Lord in heaven. Um, so I'm very happy to be here. Um, uh, we, as Pastor said, we live in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Uh, I have a, a wife. Uh, her name is Susan Matthews. We have a, uh, we, we have three children. As Pastor mentioned, uh, you know, um, uh, Philip was our oldest son. He went out to be with the Lord. I'll talk a little bit more about him in a minute. Uh, and then I have two more children, uh, Sarah and Caleb. They are, uh, they are here with me in Chattanooga. And um, I'm very grateful for this opportunity to minister before you. Uh, God has, uh, you know, blessed us tremendously, uh, even during this time. And I hope that uh, God has kept all of you safe during this time of COVID and, and all the unrest that is going on. And I pray for God's grace and mercy uh, to rest upon your life. Um, the, uh, the, the, today, you know, as Pastor asked me to preach and speak, I, was, uh, I wanted to speak about the authority and power of a believer. I was just focusing um, mo mostly on the call of God upon our lives to preach the kingdom of God. So that's what I wanted to basically start and talk about. But as I'm speaking about it, I also want to, um, before that, you know, I guess qualify and also talk to you about what we do, because we are all called to go out into this world and preach the gospel. Uh, it's a it's a very strong calling that God has put into our lives. He says, "Go out into the world and preach the gospel to all creatures." You know, my uh, my son Philip would say, "You know, go and speak to all creatures." The Bible says, "Creatures, not just human beings." I'm into everything. You know. Um, and that's what we are called to do, to go out into the world and preach the gospel. Um, and so in regard to that, uh, my wife and I started this ministry called Love Without Reason. And uh, the, the reason for the ministry was because of what we started to do with our son, you know, we, when he was born. I will talk a little bit later about it. The ministry of Love Without Reason was uh, split into three folds. Uh, we are involved in... Um, um, in the fight against human trafficking, 
Um, as you all know, human trafficking is a major issue all over the world, but we are in that fight against human trafficking to prevent it, to stop it before it starts. That's the uh, vision of the organization. And as we uh, do this, uh, you know, we are, we are, uh, um, you know, we are looking at uh, doing craniofacial surgeries and human trafficking and uh, also disaster relief management. Um, I, I don't know if the audio is, is okay. I'm just, uh, I'm guessing that everything is okay. Uh, if it's not, please let me know so that I can uh, change a few things. But uh, like I said, you know, th that's the vision and we started the ministry and uh, God has been, you know, in 2007 and God has been doing incredible things with the ministry. Uh, we started in India and then we went on to Africa. Um, I think uh, you'll see some pictures on the screen, you know, where we went to different parts of Africa, like Zimbabwe and Kenya, and we uh, help people with facial surgery, cleft surgery. You know, when the, when the lip is open and when the palate is open, these children cannot speak or they cannot talk. And um, we were able to go and meet those children uh, and give them free surgery. Uh, in India as well, we've done a lot of surgeries. You know, God has allowed us to uh, do almost uh, 700, nearly 700 surgeries for children with facial deformity. I like to show these pictures because, you know, these were children that were broken, you know, children that had uh, no hope for the future, children that were considered to be humiliated and uh, supposed to be dead. And especially this child that, uh, that Alvin is showing right now, this Hall Swami, you know, we found this child as a, a completely malnourished child. Um, this child could not feed anything because his palate was open, but we were able to fix his face, we were able to fix his palate. And he's blooming into a beautiful, beautiful young man right now. So um, the ministry has grown tremendously. Um, we also have, a, a, um, I have not put pictures of that here because of uh, um, uh, privacy issues. You know, we, we work with um, women who are in human trafficking. We have a center in Mumbai where we find women who are actual sex slaves and we, we bring them out of slavery and we give, them, we give them new lives, and hundreds of women have been rescued and changed. Um, so these are like pictures of what we do uh, in, in Africa and India. We have done so many medical camps. Uh, we were about to, actually, this time we were supposed to be in, in uh, Kenya and Zimbabwe doing medical camps, but because of the pandemic, we had to uh, uh, not do those camps. Um, however, again, like I said, God has been good to us. The ministry has grown tremendously, but the ministry started because uh, of our son, Philip Matthew. Um, Pastor said that you as a church have been praying uh, for Philip, I guess last October, and I appreciate uh, all those prayers, and I really, really thank you for those prayers. So these prayers meant a lot to us, but we are people with hope, and uh, so when I share this testimony, I want to I want to celebrate what God did in my son's life. And uh, after I share the testimony, then we will go into the word. And I'll correlate some things of the testimony and the ministry with the word. So it would be, um, it would be of a blessing to all of you. Um, on July, um, uh, you know, in, 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 in the year 2000, if we can go back to Alvin, uh, to the ultrasound thing. Um, in March of 2000, you know, um, Philip, um, you know, my wife and I went to the doctor's office and we were asked to um, do, uh, you know, we, 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 went, we went for a scan, you know, because we knew we were having our first baby. And so when we went there, the doctors looked at us and they asked us, you know, um, if so, you know, what do you want to do? And then just got Susan in there and they started to scan her. And as they scanned her, um, the doctors told us that this child has so many problems. They told us that this child has a cleft lip and a cleft palate. There's possible deformities on the right side of this child's face. I was also told that there were many holes in this child's heart. Um, then we were told there are a lot of other anomalies. We don't know what they are, but definitely they could not find a stomach in the baby. And so the, uh, the, the doctors told us, you know, uh, because we cannot find a stomach, 
And because of all the other anomalies, it's best for you to abort this child. You know, this child will be a, um, you know, will be a problem for you. Go ahead and abort the child. Um, but we being people of God, uh, we decided that we're going to stand in the faith and we're going to continue to believe in what the Bible said. And so we went back to our home and we started to pray. And as we started to pray, God spoke to us from the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 18 talks about how Jeremiah went to the house of the potter and the potter was making a pot out of clay. But as he was making that pot, uh, yeah, that pot got messed up in the hands of the potter. And uh, what we hear is that uh, the potter did not take the clay and throw it away, but he took the same clay and he made it into a new vessel as seemed good to the potter. It's amazing how the Bible kind of, you know, has a story for every situation of our life. No matter what you go through in your life, the Bible has an answer to that. He has a solution to that. He has a, he has a specific answer to your problem. And that's what God did. He spoke to us. He spoke to us and told us that, you know, uh, just like the potter did not throw away the clay, just like the pot is, is like clay in the hands of the potter, so is this baby a clay in my hand. And God did an incredible, we started to pray. It's a very long story, but I won't take too much time on that because we had to go to the Word. Um, we started to pray and God did a tremendous miracle. They found the stomach where there was no stomach. And a few months later, Philip Matthews was born. He was born like, uh, like as it's shown in the screen, you know, he was born with, a cleft lip and a palate. Uh, he did not have the right side of his uh, the right side of his face. There were a lot of anomalies. Um, he, uh, uh, you know, his ear um, and his eye, his right eye and right ear were missing, um, and he had many holes in his heart. We were also told that a part of his brain, called the corpus callosum, is missing, and we were told that this child will never walk, will never talk will be a vegetable for the rest of his life. You know, and that's, that's, the, that's the child that God, you know, that we saw, you know, as, as, uh, as he was born. And, uh, we went through uh, a lot of issues. And when they told us that he will never be able to walk or talk, um, one of the responses that, you know, when we were praying, we said, Lord, let him know Jesus. That's all we ask. We want him to know Jesus. You know, and that's what I pray for each one of you, when you pray for your children, uh, this is what you pray. Lord, let them know Jesus. You know, and when you, when you pray like that, you know, your children will prosper, will succeed, will go above and beyond what you aspire them to be. You know, we mostly, I'm guessing, uh, when, I, when I look at the gallery, I see most of us are Indians in this, uh, in this, in this uh, chat. Um, most of us Indians are focused on our children uh, becoming engineers and doctors and uh, IT guys and everything, and that's all great. But I, I pray that we will set our priorities right. Let them know Jesus, you know. And God started to do some miracles in Philip's life. I mean, if I go into those miracles, this this uh, this message will never end, you know. God God started to. Um, you know, work on his brain. Uh, he started to grow and develop. He was slow. He was put into a mental uh, institution for children with mental retardation where uh, for the first uh, five years of his life. Um, but God started to heal Philip. Uh, after a few months, we almost close to a year, we saw that God healed uh, all, this, all the holes in his heart. And we were praying, you know, God, uh, all the doctors told us that you know, the holes in Philip's heart will not be uh, solved. You know, but when we prayed, God told us that which is impossible with man is possible with God. And God healed every hole in Philip's heart. Uh, God started to work on his brain. And soon uh, thereafter, you know, Philip started to talk. He started to walk. Um, he started to do things that the doctor said that he would not do. And soon we found out that uh, from the state, the state of Tennessee came to us and said, you know, this child has got no more mental retardation. By the time he turned five years old, he's got no more mental retardation. It's time for you to take him out of this school and put him into a normal public school. That's the God that we say, serve. Hallelujah. That's the God that we, that we adore because he's, he's the God of, you know, 
um, and there are people who, who, who go through various challenges in life. I know those of you who are sitting here who are part of this, uh, this service, I know that you are going through many different challenges in your life. But as you go through those challenges, I want you to understand we have a God who is above and beyond all of our challenges. We have a God who hears and answers prayers. No matter what the situation is, is, is it your heart problem? Is it your lung problem? Is it, is it, is it COVID? Is it, is, it, uh, is it any kind of diseases? No matter what it is, the Bible says there is nothing too hard for the Lord, right? It says that which is impossible with man, the doctors can say it is impossible. The doctors would write decrees and they would write out, uh, you know, um, you know, diagnosis and say that this is impossible to heal, but do not worry about that. Your focus needs to be on God. And God says that which is impossible with man, it's possible with God. Nothing is too hard for the Lord and nothing, absolutely nothing is too hard. for This is our message. And this is what we went through uh, in the first 19 years of Philip's life. Philip went through about uh, 25 surgeries in his life. Um, after 25, so on the 25th surgery, he got some complications, uh, which was a surgery on his stomach, which is not related to his face. Uh, he got some complications. And, uh, and then uh, in, uh, on October 9th, he went into surgery. Uh, on October 17th, um, Philip actually died in my hand. But when he died in my hand, I would not let go. I just would not let go. I said, Lord, this is my son that you've given me. He cannot go like this. I want to know that he is well. And um, uh, again, like I said, it's a very long story. Um, but as I prayed, I, I started to pray in tongues and, and, and speak and believe and, and speak life into my son. Um, and after 11 minutes of him being dead, God raised him up. Um, and then, you know, he was taken into the ICU. And, uh, and then for, he stayed with us for five days. The doctors told us that he's brain dead, he's brain damaged. He won't be able to communicate anymore. But as we started to pray, uh, Philip woke up, he opened his eyes. Uh, his cognitive abilities came back. He started to communicate with us. There was zero brain damage. The doctors said they could not believe what happened with this child. You know, a child who was dead with 11 minutes of no oxygen to his brain, he comes back and he is completely sane. But anyways, after uh, five days of experiencing him, the Lord clearly showed us that it was time for Philip to go. There was a decision that we had to make um, because Philip had uh, the, uh, the infection had gone to his lungs, and, but he was healed of it. The doctor said his lung uh, was healed, uh, his body was healed, but it was time for him to go. Um, and we, we, we understood that, you know, it was, a, it was a very difficult time for us. People all over the world was praying for us. The doctors still are kind of mesmerized as to how this child who came back and they checked his lungs, it was fine. There were other issues they were saying, they were all okay. Um, the doctors were mesmerized as to how he came back. Um, but our God is an awesome God, okay? So um, at the end of this whole, um, um, you know, experience. One thing I, one thing I truly believe, you know, um, precious uh, in the sight of the Lord uh, is the death of a saint. It was such a beautiful moment. Uh, I know God, God, God was glorified for Philip's life. Philip has, uh, Philip spoke to millions of people around the world. The impact that Philip had uh, was tremendous. Uh, he reached out to millions of people. Uh, we were able to do over nearly 700 surgeries because of what uh, we went through with Philip. Hundreds and hundreds of women were saved and changed. Um, international medical missions were started. See, all this started because uh, of one, one uh, act of obedience. I honor my wife in this matter. She said, even if the child... Um, uh, is completely disabled and deformed. Uh, and even if the child has no hope, I do not want to abort. And that one, that one act um, gave rise to a tremendous movement around the world. And I thank God for that. So that is my, my little testimony. And I, uh, and I pray that that is a blessing to, to some of you. And 
you know, as we share our testimony, we always say, you know, there are a lot of people who have gone through abortions, who have gone through different kinds of problems in your life. And we say, you know, please, you understand God is a God of forgiveness. God is a God of love. No matter what has happened in the past, that is not what matters. What matters is that God loves you. Okay. No matter how, how horrible your life has been, God says, you know, come to me. You know, and that's our message. It's our message of love. It's called love without reason, unconditional love. So we want to talk to those people, you know, and, you know, those who have had to go through abortion. We pray for them that God will heal them, you know, because this, these babies are precious in the sight of God. But if it has happened, you know, we pray that God will heal them. We also uh, are, like I said, very thankful for God is that what God has done. God called uh, Susan and me into the full-time ministry. And this call of God upon our lives is not an, not an easy thing, you know. We always need to understand there is, a, there is a, 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 a way in which God deals with us when he calls us for the ministry. And I want to talk a little bit about that as to how, um, you know, the authority and power that is given to us uh, during the time when God calls us. So let's turn to the book of Matthew. Um, and also the book of Luke, um, Matthew chapter 10, uh, we see verse 1, he says, uh, and also Luke chapter 9, uh, verse 1, and I want to read both of them together. Um, what he says is, when he had called the 12 disciples, this Matthew chapter 9, 10, when he had called the 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal all kinds of sickness, and all kinds of diseases. And in Luke chapter 9, it's the same thing, but he goes on, it adds, a, adds another word there. It says he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure all diseases, to cure diseases. He sent them to preach the kingdom and to heal the sick. It's a very powerful, powerful um, word that is mentioned there. First of all, he called us. You know, we are all called. Um, I know those of us who are called, um, those of us who are, um, those of you who are listening to the word of God right now, now, God has called us with a heavenly calling, a high calling. It's an election. It's a choosing. It's a calling uh, that's very, very special. <laughs> he does not, he, you know, the, so the, the way he you know, it says like many are called, but few are chosen. You know, he go, he, the call of God is given to all of us, okay? But then there are very few who listen and who obey and who come uh, and, and, and listen to it and come and, 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 and in obedience surrender their lives to the call of God. Many are called with different purposes. Some are called to be apostles and, and, uh, uh, and evangelists and, and, and pastors and you know, teachers and, you know, all of those prophets, you know, they're called to be in different callings. Some of them are called outside these, uh, these main areas. You, maybe you're doing helps or administration. Different kinds of calling is given to people. The issue is, when you are called, are you ready? Are you ready to obey? And this is a very difficult thing for people to understand, you know. Um, when God called me, God called me at a very, very young age to the ministry. Um, but I had, a, I had a problem with it. Uh, I realized that my, um, my focus, I, 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 was, I was divided in terms of what, was, what the world was offering and what the Lord was offering. For many years, I lived in, in, in darkness, trying to understand um, how... How do I do what you call me to do, Lord? Um, is there joy in following you? You know, sometimes we think Christian life is boring. That's because we don't understand how exciting, how exciting the ministry can be. And I want to bring all that in focus today. Um, so it took me a long time to accept the call of God. I, I remember one night as, uh, as I was praying and uh, uh, I had listened to a, a preacher, a, a, a singer named John, Ron Kennelly, Kennelly, and he, there was a song that he used to sing, if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Uh, the, the word was so, and I was, you know, I, I, I didn't mention, I was born in 
ಬ್ಯಾಂಗ್ಳೂರ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಸೊ ಐ ನೋ ಕನ್ನಡ ಯಾರಾದ್ರೂ ಕನ್ನಡ ಮಾತಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ರೆ ನನ್ನ ಹತ್ರ ಮಾತಾಡ್ಬೋದು ಸೊ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಗುಡ್ ಐ ನೋ ಕನ್ನಡ ಐ ನೋ ಟ್ಯಾಮಲ್ ಐ ನೋ ಮಲಯಾಳಂ ಅಂಡ್ ಐ ನೋ ತೆಲುಗು ಸೊ ಎನಿವೆ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ಬಾರ್ನ್ ಇನ್ ಬ್ಯಾಂಗ್ಳೂರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ವೆನ್ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ವೆನ್ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ಲಿಸ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಟು ದಟ್ ಸಾಂಗ್ ಲೋಡ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಕೆನ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಯು ಕೆನ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಮೀ ಲೋಡ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಮೈ ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಮೈ ಫೀಟ್ ಯು ನೋ ಟೇಕ್ ಮೈ ಯೂಸ್ ಮೈ ಲಿಪ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಮೈ ಯು ನೋ ಮೈ ಎಂಟೈರ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಲೋಡ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಇಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಐ ಕೆಪ್ ಸಿಂಗಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ಓವರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಓವರ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಐ ಸಬ್ಮಿಟ್ ಇನ್ ಮೈ ಲೈಫ್ ಟು ದ ಲೋಡ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ನೋ ಐಡಿಯಾ about the call of god on my life i had no idea about what i would be going through um for that call of god to be achieved on my life um so i see that you know every every step of the way god has been orchestrating my life so that i could fit into the into the calling that he had given me so i ask each one of you you know sometimes you're going through major problems in your life and you don't know why and you have no idea why you're going through what you're going through but you know what i want you i want you to know that god has ordained your steps the, the only question is are you obedient you know and and i and i laugh when i say this thing because it truly is not easy to be obedient to the call of god and i'm i'm a i'm a guy i'm a very um how shall i say it i'm a very straightforward person in the sense that there's no gimmicks about me uh, i say it like it is um, when god called me and when god showed me uh, what he wants to do through the ministry that he called me i i was afraid i started with the youth ministry i was in the youth ministry at our church and i didn't want to be i had uh, i had studied engineering in um, in india and i had destroyed my life you know i had gone into gang wars i had uh, gotten involved in uh, in gangs and 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 street fighting um so my whole uh spiritual life um was left behind and i became a very worldly person and when i was that worldly person i came to america i got married to my wife and i came here but i was told by by my pastor to become the youth pastor of the church i didn't want to do it I told him that I can't do it and I was convinced that God had abandoned me you know because I I lived a horrible life uh, uh some people you know I could I could even say that I just barely escaped going to jail to jail for the things that I did so that that life was a horrible life so I I had decided God that there is no more God does not love me anymore and my life uh my 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 gifts and my calling that god had given me was no more and i had lost it all so as i was doing that you know one day the lord spoke to me from the book of romans romans chapter 11 uh it's a beautiful verse that it says romans 11 verse 29 and if you guys are able to take your book your bible and read it uh there's a verse there it says in romans chapter 11 verse 29 uh it very clearly says for the gifts and the calling of god are irrevocable right the gifts and the calling of god are without repentance it says in the niv in the uh, K- kjv it says it is irrevocable that means it cannot be taken from you wow think about it there are things three things that the bible says you know there are three things the bible says one is you know when you when you go to the book of book of numbers uh, where it talks about Balaam was asked to call the people um to curse the people of god but Balaam says you know whom god has blessed you know you cannot unbless or you cannot curse you know so to speak so the blessing of god cannot be taken away from you and then in these two areas it says the calling and the gifts of god cannot be taken away from you that is an incredible thing uh, that that i want you all to hear people of god you know the devil deceives so many of us you know when he when he brings in doubts and worries and lord you know i messed up i said you know this is not an excuse to sin um you know sometimes we say lord i have sinned i've done this i've wronged you i've not prayed 
I've not done this, I've not pursued after you, I've not, all that is true and there are consequences for all of that. However, from God's perspective, one thing is clear, the gift and the calling of God is irrevocable. It can never, never, ever, ever be taken away from you. The blessings of God cannot be taken away from you. You know, when you read that chapter, there is no, there is no conditions before or after that, you know. Yes, those of you, we were disobedient, you know. I, I'm a very classic case of that. I was given the gift and the calling at a very young age. And then I went away from that. I moved away from the presence of God. You know, I did all that I can. But the Lord came searching after me. You know, he came searching after me. He came searching after you, my brother and sister. He came searching after you because he had called you. Because he had gifted you. He had blessed you. He's not going to take that away. God is not a, a stingy person, you know. Like, okay, I'm going to give you something. I'm going to snatch it back from you because you were not faithful. We serve a faithful God even in our unfaithfulness. Even in our unfaithfulness, he is faithful. Does that mean that we continue in the unfaithfulness? No, no. God has called us to be faithful. God has called us, you know, to be, to be his, uh, uh, you know, to, to, be, to, 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 to propagate what he wants to do. The kingdom of God needs to grow, needs to expand, and he can do it only through us. So I, I want to qualify that because, you know, it's important for you to know that if you were called into the ministry, if you were called, you know, and given a gift of God, please understand the gift may be dormant in you. It is time to stir up the gift, right? Paul says, stir up the gift, stir it up, stir it up. It is there. It's not gone. Some of us have received the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirit, interpretation of tongues. You know, these are powerful gifts of the spirit, faith and miracles and healing. These are powerful gifts of the Spirit. They're not, you know, some of us have operated in it. Many of you have operated in those gifts. But because of several reasons, it may be lying dormant. Paul says, stir it up. You know, it's not like what you think, that the gift has departed from you. It has left you. In the Old Testament times, there was the, the Spirit coming and leaving. But in the New Testament time, the Spirit of God says, I'm with you, okay? I mean, there is the place where we can leave the whole thing and run away and, and just leave the presence of God. And I pray that you don't do that. But if the, if the gifts have been given to you, it is still there. I pray that God will help you stir it up. Stir it up, renew those gifts of the Spirit. Because there's a lot that God wants to do to each one of us. So in the book of Matthew, as we come back to the book of Matthew chapter 10, he says that he gave them power and authority, okay, over unclean spirits to cast them out, to heal all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of diseases. You know, when we say this, um, many times in the Christian uh, world, um, especially in this day and age, people do not believe that miracles still happen. They think it happens in the past. They think it happened, you know, many, many centuries ago. Uh, most people believe that miracles can happen, but it does not happen to me. It happens to everybody else. <laughs> so we are, we are in a place where we think that miracles uh, is only for the qualified few, not for everybody. You know, I had the same thought in my mind till the Lord started to open up my mind. And he started to, to, to teach me that if he has sent me, then he will equip me. Right? If he has sent you and me, then God will equip us. He equips us to do those things. Okay? Tremendous things that he talks about. He says he gives them power over unclean spirits uh, to cast them out. In another person, he says in verse 7 and 8, he says, as you go preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand, heal the sick. He does not say pray for the sick. He says heal the sick. <laughs> That's something that we, we, we really need to take uh, pay attention to. You know, Jesus himself, it's in red letters in my Bible, says that, you know, when you go and preach, saying the kingdom, is of, uh, kingdom of heaven is at hand, what do you do? You heal the sick. 
You cleanse the lepers. You raise the dead. Cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. That is what God is equipping us with, you know. I'm focusing on these two chapters because I, I feel there's so much embedded in this chapter, in these two chapters of uh, Matthew chapter um, uh, 9 and, and 10, okay. When you go home, when you, get, when, you, when you finish the service, go home and read it. I guess you're all at home anyway. So, <laughs> so anyway, um, he says, heal the sick. Cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out demons. Sometimes we wonder, oh Lord, how is that possible? How could I do that? You know, I don't know if I have the gifting. I don't know if I have the calling. I don't know if I have the power to do it. Jesus said, I'm giving you the power and the authority, the power to trample on serpents and scorpions and over every power of the wicked one. Okay? When God sends you, he equips you. He doesn't understand that. This is, this is basic. I know there are a lot of things with, with regards to anointing and calling and, and all of that. But basically, God equips you with the, with, the, with the authority and power to do these things. Why do I speak so authoritatively on these matters? Um, I have no doubt in my mind uh, about the power of the Holy Spirit that God has put in my head, put in me, and in you. You know? That power that is put in you and me is raising from the dead, quickening of the dead power. It's the resurrection power of Jesus Christ that is in you and in me. So when we go out to preach the gospel, we need to understand that, that when we, every word that we say carries power, carries weight, right? And the authority, um, in, the, in, the, in the slide that I, I was showing up, I was, talking about there were two phrases that was mentioned one is authority and the other one is power okay the authority is the right uh, i don't know if uh, alvin has this that that slide but the authority is a right to do something i have the right or the uh, or it's like a, it's like a policeman a policeman has a right to stop the traffic uh, you know a law enforcement officer has the right to direct traffic, it is a right. It comes with position. It comes with a with a certain certain level of understanding. It's a it's a positional thing. The power is is something beyond that. It's also the ability and the capacity to do that. You know, you not only have the right, but you have the ability and the capacity to do what God told you to do. You know, that's why in the, in the book of Luke chapter nine. Uh, you know, verse one, um, uh, Jesus said, Jesus gave them power and authority to do these things. So people of God, I, I want you to just, you know, think about your life. How, how is your life? Are you living a life of authority and power? Or are you living a life of just, you know, bland Christianity? You know, a life of, life of authority and power is very exciting. You know, the, the Bible says that he has given life and death is in the power of the tongue. Okay, I'm just giving you a small example. Life and death is in the power of our tongue. So when we, when we hear that and when we understand that, you know, most people are like, okay, life and death, most people do not understand what it is. But do you know that with your words, you can call out life and you can call out death? Every situation in your life, what are you doing? What do you call? You know, Philip, uh, my son, and, and even, even my ch all my children, you know, when they fall sick, um, we don't, we, we, the, the first thing that we do is we speak to that sickness, to that illness, and command it to leave. The Word of God says in Mark chapter 11, uh, he talks about the fig tree, and he talks about, you know, uh, how, how Jesus spoke to the victory, to the fig tree. And then when the disciples asked, you know, how did the fig tree wither, Lord? And Jesus said, you know, any man who shall speak to this mountain and have no doubt and command it to be removed from here and cast into the sea, it shall be done. There's such power in that. There's power in our words, you know. And so the authority that God gives us is several fold. The authority that he gives us is you know, the authority that comes from God, the authority by his name, 
You know, we stand on the name of Jesus because at his name, when we declare the name of Jesus at his name, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Amen? Amen? There's such authority that comes because that, that name that Jesus had, he says, I'm giving you. And we carry the name of Jesus when we walk out. He also says, by his blood, you know, the, when, he, when, he, when he shed his blood for us on the cross of Calvary, he did that for all of our sins, all of our weaknesses, everything in our life was covered by the blood of Jesus that we have right standing before God. So when we go stand and when we go and preach the word of God and when we go and talk in front of people, we go by the blood of Jesus saying that it's not my righteousness, it is not my holiness, even though I have to be holy and righteous, that's a different part. But it is not my righteousness that I'm standing with. I'm standing with the righteousness of God. By the blood of Jesus, I stand in the name of the Lord. Amen? That's how we, we approach these matters. Many times, you know, people are, are afraid to go and, uh, uh, and minister because they think, you know, I'm not worthy. You know, I, I, I don't think I'm worthy. I don't think I'm good enough. I don't think, you know, and so there's a lot of, how shall I say, insecurity that is in our life. But I say this today, the authority that God gives us by his name, uh, his name in Philippians chapter two, like I said, is that by his name, at his name, every knee shall bow, every confess, every, every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. When we take the name of Jesus, and when we carry the blood of Jesus, when we go into a place, then we speak by his word, right? There's an authority that comes by the word of Jesus. I love this part where uh, the authority is given to us by his word. Many times we, when we think about the word of God, you know, we think about it as just this, this Bible and we just, you know, skim through it and we don't understand what is going on. Most of us, who read the KJV, you know, you're like, oh my God, this is like old Victorian text. You know, it's hard to understand. Uh, and then some of us go into the NIV and beyond that, and then go to Amplified and uh, trying to make sense of all those things. But you, whatever you're doing, that's not the issue. What I'm saying is that this word is so powerful, right? Like I said, three things, authority by his name, by his, by his blood and by his, by his word. What is the word? You all know, John chapter one says that, you know, um, in the beginning was the word, the word was, was with God, the word was God. And then it goes on to talk about how that word became flesh and dwelt among us. That word is Jesus. This word was the word in Genesis chapter one. It says, God said, God said, God said, let there be light, let there be you know, all forms of uh, vegetation, let there be firmament, let there be you know, the, the, the dry ground and the waters. And all those things were said by the word of God, right? I think in uh, Hebrews chapter 11, let's see if I can find that verse. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3, um, it says that by faith, we understand that the world were framed by the word of God. The worlds were framed by the word of God. One word that was uttered brought out creativity to such an extent. Amen? And the same thing he says, in, I think in John chapter 17, uh, Jesus talks about that word. He says that same word that God gave him, meaning Jesus, he gives out to the disciples. And through the disciples, it comes to us. So do you understand how powerful this whole thing is? You know, um, in uh, John, John chapter 17, um, verse 8, he says that I have given them the words which you have given me. Right? God, God the Father gave the word to Jesus. And Jesus, who is the word, gave it to us, who are his disciples. Now it is up to us to go forth and propagate the kingdom through using his words because the authority of his word. It's a powerful thing. 
you know, many of us are leaving things behind. I remember uh, when I was in, in, uh, in Mumbai, in, in one of the red light areas where we were ministering uh, to, to, some, um, uh, to some women who were sex slaves. Uh, as I was ministering, I was walking through, I was walking through that, those, those, um, those narrow streets. And as I was walking through that, uh, this pastor called me and told me, Pastor, uh, Santos, can you come here? I want you to pray for this woman. And the woman was lying down there and she had uh, tuberculosis and she was very near death. Her sister had died three days before that. You know, and so when I walked in, she was dying. Everything was a mess. People were afraid to go inside her room. And so when I walked in, the first thing I looked at her and I said, you're not going to die. You're going to live. You're going to declare the glory of God. And the moment she heard this, she was like, this lady was really faint. And then the word of God came to me that uh, is in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter, um, I'm sorry, Mark, Mark chapter 16, um, verse, verse uh, 15 onward, let us read that if that is able, I've got about, about five, six minutes and I'm going to end with that. It says Matthew chapter six, I mean, Mark chapter 16, verse 15, he says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Okay, that's another whole topic. Then he says, these signs shall follow them who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. If they pick up serpents, you know, they will pick up serpents. No, let's not do that. But um, <laughs> and if, if they drink any deadly things, it shall by no means hurt them. Then he says, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So I remember going to this place and I laid hands on this woman and I said, in the name of Jesus, I command tuberculosis to leave right now. Um, and that's all I did. Just did that prayer and walked out. About, about half an hour later, this lady got up from her sick bed completely healed. And she came up to our center and she testified about how God healed her. I mean, I can talk about miracle after miracle, how God uses his name, uh, his blood, and his word to help uh, propagate the kingdom of God to the whole nation, to the whole world. You have to understand that this is a, it's a very uh, important um, tool that God gives us, okay? I, I remember we were, we were, we were in, uh, uh, in, again in Mumbai, you know, ministering to different people. And I and you see this this paralyzed guy lying down like that, and uh, he was given some kind of an injection, and he has been paralyzed for many days, many weeks, you know. And this lady who was a sex slave, who used to be a sex slave, she came to me, and she was like, uh, "Well, sometimes you know, this lady is uh, this boy has been paralyzed for so many weeks, you know. Uh, you say that you can, you know, that God can heal, uh, you know, can you do something?" So we went there and we prayed for this child. And I laid hands on him, and I spoke the word. I commanded the infection to leave his body. I commanded his spine to be straight, and I commanded him to get up and walk. And I prayed that, and I said, okay, be healed. And I turned, and I walked away. Now, this lady who is a new believer, she said, but, but, but yeah, this, uh, this boy is still, you know, lying down on his bed. He's not awakened. So I told her, you know, Baham, don't worry about it. That's not what it is. It's our duty to speak the healing and to believe without a shadow of a doubt. I'm not going to stand there and wonder if it's going to happen. I am believing that God has healed that child just like he healed my son. You understand? This is what it means to pray without, without doubt. So when I did that, we turned around, we walked in about five minutes. There was a tug on this lady's churida. She turned around and saw it was that young boy. He had gotten up from his paralysis, completely healed. This is the God that we serve. I mean, miracle after miracle that I can share, okay? Where God heals people of not only, not only physical ailments, mental ailments, emotional, psychological things. So I want to I want to encourage I want to encourage each and every one of you as I'm closing down right now my time is up I want to encourage each one of you 
you know, there are many things that I can uh, that I prepared for that I you know maybe another time. But I want to encourage you: the words that you speak, the words that you use, are powerful. God has appointed and given us the authority to go out and preach the gospel, and that authority is a positional one, wherein we have this place where God has placed us in that we can speak. Like it's a like like Jairus tells Jesus, you do not even have to come to my house. I understand authority. You do not even have to come to my house. Speak the word. Speak the word, and my servant will be healed. We have such power in our tongue, and we have to exercise it. We have to understand that every step. And and please, and, and please understand when I say this, I also uh, qualify this by saying we are weak in our flesh. Sometimes the devil will come in so many different ways um, to mess us up in our minds and in our spirits, and we do not know how to handle certain situations. So it is important. I'm qualifying this by saying that some situations, you know, we may we may lose our control and we may just turn away from God and go away. But I'm telling you, the gifts and calling of God are irrevocable. So when you exercise your authority, and when you exercise the power that God has given you. You will see an incredible miracle change in your life. I want to encourage you to do that. Okay, those of you who have had the call of God on your life, and if you feel that uh, you know that, that, that time has gone, many years have gone by. I was not able to exercise what you called me to do. Lord, I'm sorry. I can't do this anymore. I want you to. I want to encourage you. Do not fear. The calling and the gifts that God has given you is not is 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 irrevocable. It cannot be taken away from you. And those of you who have the call of God on your life and the gifts of God on your life, you know, do not hesitate to use it. Amen. Amen. Do not hesitate to use it. The authority that God has given us is powerful. You know, we are called to go out there and liberate people. We are called to go out there and change the lives of people. We are called to go out there and be extraordinary people. I I always tell uh, tell my family, I'm an extraordinary person. You know, it's not about arrogance. It's about what God has put in me and what God has put in each one of you. And I pray that remember this: we have authority uh, from God by His by His name, by His blood, and by His word. Exercise that word, that word of authority that you have. You have to use it. I'm going to just say a word of prayer if that is okay with Pastor. I'm just going to quickly say a word of prayer. Um, I, I pray and hope that people you've been blessed by this because I've been walking in this authority. I've been walking in this anointing that God has given me, and I pray that today God is going to change your lives and transform it. There's going to be a powerful. Move of the Spirit. Let revival break out through each one of you. Let there be a move. Let there be a move in that place. Uh, is it okay, Pastor, if I say a word of prayer? Yes. Okay. Let's uh, let's just let's just pray and let's just believe. You know, just just remember the anointing of God that was upon your life. Remember the call of God that has been upon your life. Remember the gift and the blessing of God that is on your life. And right now, Lord, I just thank you. I pray for these people who are listening to my words, Father. Lord, I thank you for the anointing that you've given them. I thank you for the gifts and the calling that you've given each and every one of them, Father. I thank you for the blessing that you've given them, Father God. Those blessings and the call and the gifts are irrevocable. It cannot be removed, oh Father. But Lord, because of our our disobedience, because of our unfaithfulness, Lord, because of our laziness, Father, some of these. Uh, gifts lie dormant, Lord. Our calling seems to be discarded. But I pray over the people right now that you're going to touch each and every one of them in the name of Jesus. I pray for a breakthrough. I pray for a complete breakthrough in the lives and in the minds and the hearts of the people, Father. Those that you have called, Father, you chose them, Father God. Those that you chose, Father God, I pray that you will use them and glorify them for your kingdom's sake, O Father. Lord, as the Word of God says, the 
the the the the, uh, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. I thank you for equipping us with authority and power. So I speak over every single person who is in this in this audience, Father. I pray I speak a powerful. Lord, a miracle over their lives, Father. Every sickness, disease, I command it to be healed. As the word of God says, Jesus went about healing all sicknesses, Hallelujah. all diseases. In the name of Jesus, I declare a healing over every single person in the audience right now, Father. Lord, you are a good God. You are a good God, Father God. I thank you for your grace, your blessing, Father. Lord, I thank you for your faithfulness every day. Lord, once again, I lift up this church. Father, I pray that there be a blessing in the community, Father. There be a blessing, Father, across the nations, oh, Father God. I thank you for Pastor Sam Kudia. I thank you for his family. Lord, I pray that the name of God will be exalted. We love you. We give you the glory, Father. I proclaim a blessing, Father God, over all of these people. In Amen. Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Brother.